Thank you. I love you all. I love all the crew and, of course, my friends in the audience. Thanks for putting up with me again. Bye-bye. A life well lived and a life we celebrate tonight here at WFMY News 2. Lee Kynert, longtime broadcaster and pioneer of WFMY News 2's Good Morning Show died at the age of 86. Lee lived and breathed the triad in WFMY News 2 for decades, starting one of the country's first good morning shows back in 1956. Hundreds of thousands of people greeted the day with Lee Kynert, always here to start your morning off right. But he was more than just a journalist. Lee Kynert will always be a North Carolina legend. Lee Kynert through the years, from his humble beginning, to his love of radio and his passion for storytelling. He traveled the world and he took us all along for his journeys. Tonight, we have to say goodbye, but we get to cherish those memories he left us behind. He loved his family, he loved North Carolina, and he loved you, the viewer. WFMY News 2's Julie Luck takes a look at the legacy of Lee Kiner. The wall is coming down. To understand the impact Lee Kynard had in his 86 years on Earth, we have to go back to 1931. He was born in Concord, North Carolina, and his childhood dream to be part of the radio industry. He was infatuated with big personalities of the airwaves like Grady Cole, Edward Murrow, and Lowell Thomas. He started his radio career when he was 18 as a janitor at a small station in Albemarle. He later became a disc jockey and producer at WABZ. Just three years later, he was part owner. A few months went by and he was summoned to active duty. Through his military service, he was provided the opportunity to work in television and film. Stationed at Fort Bragg, Lee produced a film showcasing the Army's first atomic weapons demonstration. Lee came to WFMY News 2 in 1956 in front of the camera and behind the scenes. He was the studio floor manager when then Vice President Richard Nixon came to Greensboro. And all of New York press came into Studio One and sat down and Nixon did his thing and I, you know, I gave him the finger, uh, this finger, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you sit back in awe because this man is being asked important questions. As Lee made his transition into television, he admits he and many others who pioneered the industry had to figure out what it was all about, how to tell a story electronically and to be well balanced so viewers could make up their own minds. The youngest announcer at WFMY News 2 in 1957, Lee Kynard started the Good Morning Show. The latest in weather, news, sports, and interesting features. Now, here's your host, Lee Kynard. At that time, the program was only 30 minutes long. It grew to three and a half hours long, becoming the longest running local morning TV show in the country. In his time at WFMY, Lee also co-anchored the 6 p.m. newscast from 1984 to 1999. For 43 years, Lee Kynard was the face of WFMY News 2 before signing off in 1999. Now, if you watched him, you know Lee's personality, it just jumped through the screen. He made everyone feel like a friend. Today, WFMY News 2's Jansen Silvers spoke to some folks who were lucky enough to actually be in Lee's life. Everyone has a Lee Kynard story. Whether you're a longtime friend like Shirley Fry, this woman who was, had been in a coma, and she said she awakened and heard Lee talking about reading the next and learning to read. So what she did was picked up her Bible and took it with her and learned to read the Bible from reading connections. Or someone who has only known him a few years. Being a friend that you may have never met, but when you did meet him, you already had the friendship going and you could talk to him about anything. And he was just, he was just a genuine guy. For decades, Lee Kiner told the stories of the triad, and today he is the story, one that brings a mix of emotions. Immediately, sadness, uh, but by the same time, joy, knowing that here is a man who had given so much to our city and to our county and had meant so much to so many people you had to feel joy that he used his gifts and his talents to better our city. If he kind of said it, people believed it. The voice of Greensboro, if Lee Kynard said it and broadcast it, it was true. Today's news is the one news story nobody wants to hear about Lee Kynard, which is why this final sign-off 
is so tough. I, I'll just miss him. So interesting that they use the same phrases, that if he said it, it was true. Absolutely, and I think Shirley really speaks for a lot of people there. We just miss him. And, uh, you know, we were reading through some comments earlier today on our Facebook page, and I know we're going to get to some of those as well. But the most interesting story that I saw was one woman was talking about her young, young son years ago learning to speak because of Lee Kiner. Oh. They said he watched the Good Morning Show every day, and when he spoke, he was trying to speak to Lee. He really was an inspiration for generations. Now, one of the people who knew Lee Kiner the most that he was closest to here at WFMY was, of course, Sandra Hughes. He was her mentor when she first started in the news before eventually becoming co-host. Sandra truly loved Lee and she shared some of her favorite memories with us today. The biggest thing I want people to know is when I started to work at WFMY, I really didn't know how to be a broadcaster, how to be a journalist. Lee Kiner taught me day to day things that I should know and things that I should do. And he was so good about it, you know, and I was stumbling trying to catch up and he would say, uh, Hughes, you were good today, but tomorrow you got to be better. I said, oh, okay. He was not only my coach, my teacher, my mentor, but he was one of my best friends. Uh, and that's the one thing that I will always remember about the way he treated me, and not just me, but other people around the TV station. I think the fact that he was so real. I mean, he was a big TV star here in this area. But at the same time, he was a good neighbor, a good friend, and he was always willing to do whatever it would take to make other people uh, live their lives fully. He was very good at that. And um, he, he taught me how to be a broadcast journalist, but he also taught me how to be a real person and how to pay attention to people and what they need and what they're asking for to help give them that. He never, in my opinion, became Lee Kiner, the broadcaster. He was always Lee Kiner, the man on TV, the neighbor, the friend, and all of that. He, he didn't, there was no separation in who he was and what he was. Lee was incredibly down to earth, especially when you consider the awards that he won. Earlier this year, Lee received the Unsung Hero Award from the International Civil Rights Center and Museum for his work at WFMY and for the African American community. This award and my family believes this too, is the greatest award that I have ever received for any work that I have done by accident or intention. Civil rights were so important to Lee that when someone called it a bomb threat about Sandra Hughes being on the air, Lee refused to leave the building, anchoring with her through the danger. So many folks around the triad in North Carolina have fond memories of Lee, including our lawmakers. Congressman Mark Walker put out a statement saying, during eventful decades of change for our nation, Lee was a steadfast and trustworthy voice for our community. Always advocating for a better life for all, for many in the triad, he will always be the first and best memory of journalistic excellence. And Congressman Ted Budd says over the decades, Lee covered some of the most important and historical times in American history. The triad community mourns the loss, but the legacy surrounding the father of the Good Morning Show will not soon be forgotten. Now, many of you at home are also sharing your memories of Lee. W1 News 2's Luke Lydon has some that are really pretty touching. Yeah, Ben, we've seen dozens and dozens of these Facebook posts scrolling through our Facebook page on WFMA News 2. And he left a lot of people at home with a lot of memories, and here are just a few of them. Patricia was saying, my dad was blind and made baskets. Till the day he died, he was so proud that Lee Kynard came to his shop to interview him. He brought more than a story. He brought pride to average people with extraordinary stories of talents to showcase. A real loss for our state. So sorry for his family. While Denise was saying, I grew up listening to Lee Kynard on Channel 2. I lived down the road from Channel 2, so this was my neighborhood. Lee Kynard was bigger than life when he spoke, and you listened. I have so missed him since he retired. Now I'll miss him all the time. What an absolutely special man. Bless him forever, sending love and light to Lee and to his family. And one more post we saw earlier today saying, oh my goodness, from Rhonda, how many mornings did I wake up to his voice and know that everything was all right in the world? If he sounded sad, 
you knew it was going to be a sad day, RIP. And if you want to share your own memories of Lee Kiner, just head to our Facebook page, WFMY News 2, and share your comments, and we'll try to share those throughout the week and tomorrow morning on the Good Morning Show. We are also praying for his family tonight. Lee met his wife, Ann Milton, in 1949. It was a blind date, but for them, it was love at first sight. The two married three years later in 1952, their love leading to a 66-year-long marriage. Lee always said Anne kept him grounded and motivated him to reach his dreams. And this part, this is so sweet. She picked out his ties for him every day so he would match on TV. The two have three kids and several grandchildren. Now, Lee was a family man, spending his retirement watching his children grow up, but he didn't slow down. He actually found a new gig, education. He joined Guilford Technical Co Community College in 2000 and helped create the Larry Gatlin School of Entertainment Technology. He also served as the executive assistant to the president until April 2014 and was the institutional historian. There he oversaw the Office of Marketing and Public Information. WFI News 2's Eric Chilton grew up in the triad and always looked up to Lee. Eric loves TV history and put it plainly when asked what Lee means to the triad. Lee meant more to television in this market than any one person in the history of all the TV stations here. He really set the course for what it would be till now. He started the Good Morning Show himself and it's the longest running local weekday morning show in the whole country. Meteorologist Ed Matthews spent a lot of time with Lee, too. He was his mentor from the very beginning. Late last year, Lee joined us for the 60th anniversary of the Good Morning Show, and there, Ed talked about how much Lee means to him. I, I want to say, of course, when I walked in the, the front door back in 1988, I grew up watching Lee oh, yes. uh, down in Sanford, and it's like, Oh my God, there's Lee Kiner. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, started working with him on the, uh, the Good Morning Show. Lee, I have learned so much from you over the years. The person that I am on the Good Morning Show is thanks to you. You have been my mentor Aww. in broadcasting. You and Sandra Hughes have been my mentor, and I've learned a lot from both of you, and I want to thank you for that. We all want to thank him. We'll be right back with more on the life and legacy of Lee Kiner, Shape WFMY. And he continues to do so today. As a matter of fact, when we walk into the studio, we see his name and it motivates us to be better journalists. We're honoring the life and legacy of Lee Kynard. He was a longtime news anchor here at WFMI News 2. Many of you welcomed him right into your homes. Now he impacted just about everyone he met. He was a TV news pioneer, but most of all, he was a friend. Lee Kynard passed away this morning at 6.47 a.m. He was just 86 years old, shy of his 87th birthday, which would have been on November 5th. Lee and his wife, Ann, recently celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary. He died at Moses Cone Hospital, surrounded by his family. Now, Lee Kiner was always fascinated with the world of television. It started after a family trip to the World Fair in New York in 1939. Then in West Virginia High School, he spoke into a microphone for the first time. He appeared on a weekly production created by his class. He was an undergraduate and graduate degree in English, plus a doctoral in education from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Education was important to Lee, not just for himself, but for everyone he came in contact with. He went on to write three books. They include Good Morning, 40 Years on America's Longest Running and Most Successful Early Morning Show, Guilford Technical Community College, 1958 through 2008, and North Carolina, Behold the Beauty. In addition to writing books, he wanted more people to be able to read them. Reading Connections, an organization devoted to helping adults improve their basic reading skills, was near and dear to Lee. Lee Kynard was instrumental in helping promote the message and vision of Reading Connections. Yet another example of his lasting impact on the triad. Decided to learn how to read because I come down with cancer four years ago and I couldn't read at all and I wanted to read my Bible so I could go to heaven. And I saw the organization started out as information and a referral hotline service for other literacy programs in the community. But after growing interest and great demand from adult students, Reading Connections began providing one-on-one -on -one instruction with adults with significant needs. Now, Kynard had so many talents and did pretty much every job on air, including weather. This is him with the nation's first color radar. Look at that thing. 
we're honoring the life and legacy of Lee Kynert. He pioneered the Good Morning Show and is a TV legend. Most of all, though, he impacted everyone he met. Lee Kynert passed away this morning at 6.47 a.m. He was 86 years old. Now, Lee and his wife recently celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary. He died surrounded by his family at Moses Cone Hospital. Lee Kiner did more than read the news in the studio. He told stories across the globe, traveling from Egypt to Australia to Germany. No adventure was too big for Lee. He documented his experiences, teaching folks about so many corners of the world and all of its rich history. The wall is coming down, and the sounds of the hammers destroying it may be striking the first blows in the building of a new Germany. At the beginning of the 13th century, Versailles was just a small village surrounded by marsh and woodland. I'll tell you one thing, we certainly are enjoying your hospitality. You got a lovely cottage and a nice farm and some handsome cattle and horses up here in the uh, highlands. That's a good life. I'd like to give you an idea of what it's like in downtown London on a Friday afternoon at about 5.20. At this time, we are standing in Trafalgar Square and while Lee was mostly seen reporting the news, sports was also part of his gig. Sports anchor Luke Linden is here to tell us more about his take on sports. Yeah, Ben, uh, sports is unlike anything else because it allows us to share our perspective on such large sporting events or the, even the players involved. And Lee Kynard had a chance to try that himself at a UNC football game, and here is how he remembered that moment. LC, Woody Durham let our friendship get in his way. God bless him. Call me down at the beach one time. The old Ocean Drive Motel's blown up now. It's not there anymore. And I, I, you know, I mean, the phone rang on the street. They didn't even have one. Well, anyway, he said, Lee, how'd you like to be color man on the Carolina Football Network? And I said, you know me, I'm for esoteric things. I said, well, what does it pay? He says, $110 a Saturday. I wasn't even making $110 a week, I think. And that was a lot of money. You get to fly to places like Ohio State, right. down to New right. Orleans. So I said, I'll take the job. Well, my job was to do that halftime section and to do the commercials. But it was alien territory for me. Now, for, the, for one time in my career, the only time I, my judgment got the best of me, because I had tried sports casting in Albemarle. Right. And I owned a part of that radio station. I wouldn't put myself on sports, okay? I knew that I hadn't mastered that quick technique, that it all looked like gobbledygook when they had the plays. I couldn't understand right. that stuff, right? I'm not an athlete. I'm a great fan. So anyway, it was bad, and poor Woody, he had to call me up and fire me well after the season was <laughs> over. But it was okay. I should have fired myself. A man of many skills, and he will greatly be missed. You know, it seems so fitting that it was so rainy this morning when Lee passed. And then sunny by the afternoon, right? Yes, he would want us to smile, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, Lee did so many great things around here, and there's no way we can ever truly thank him for that. But we're going to try to let him do it in his own words and sum up what this station meant to him. Thanks, Lee. Yes, it's true. The myth, the man, the legend. He's widely <laughs> known for his work as the host of WFMY News 2's Good Morning Show, America's longest running early morning TV news show. We're talking about Lee Kiner. <laughs> and Captain Bill and others, make sure you stick around because I'm going to be talking about some of my travels for the Good Morning Show. I'll take you to New Zealand just ahead. Lee, I want to know, are you a Starbucks fan? Um, no, but the pumpkin stuff looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about my voice. It's got a little age on it. It's a deal with it. Dr. Fossil here from the Greensboro Science Center. Oh, Lee, you're preaching. <laughs> Greensboro is such a sweet little place to live. You know, it is. That's mm -hmm. what people told me before I moved up here. By the way, just to break it up a little, can I break it up sure. a little? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's your show. I love you all. I love all the crew. And of course, my friends in the audience, thanks for putting up with me again. Bye-bye.